everybody, Ben here from North Country Outdoor Guys. Today I'm going to try to show you how to make a simplified soft shackle out of zingit or lashet. Um, that's the 1.75 millimeter rope. So basically a soft shackle, for people who don't know, is basically a, it's a rope replacement for a carabiner. So you open this little side up, you pull your knot out, and then you can loop this around anything like you would normally loop a carabiner around. And then when you put that back in there and pull, this little knot restricts. And basically you don't, it won't go anywhere. Um, I'm going to use this to hold my ridgeline organizer in place on my hammock ridgeline. You can also use these in a continuous ridgeline setup for your tarp and it allows you, uh, if you prusik these on to your tarp bridge line, you can then slide your tarp back and forth and get it centered. Um, I wouldn't use these for a weight bearing application. You can uh, make the more advanced version of this with uh, 764 amp steel or other uh, bigger, stronger ropes. And then the knot you make here on the end with those versions is a more complicated knot. Uh, sometimes it's a diamond knot, which is really complicated and I can't figure out how to make it by watching tutorials. So I just went with this one because that's just an overhand knot. Um, and the rope is a little bit thicker on this end because you're gonna bury the tail in on itself here. And But I'll show you how to do that. This is from a tutorial on hammock forms by Nuggets. So I found this very helpful for my application. Uh, you could also use this just to hang stuff on your ridge line hang stuff off your pack, you know. Um, so simplified shaft, soft shackle um, made with Zingit Lashet 1.75 millimeter. So this one from his tutorial starts off uh, using a 14 inch uh, piece of rope. I found that to be too short to, uh, to actually wrap the Prusix for my liking. Um, and that ends up with uh, about a three and a half inch uh, loop uh, I made a couple other ones. This one was an 18 inch piece of rope. And you ended up with, you know, it's not looking like about five, five and a half inches, give or take, um, of a loop. That was too big. So I went down to 16 inches. which got me this one, which is just about you know, four and three quarters on the loop. So there's your various sizes. Apologize, Odin is in the background breathing real heavy. So 14 inch starting line, length of line, um, 16 inch and 18 inch. I'm, I, I'm, I made two of these, I'm gonna go with these for now. Um, and today I'm gonna show you with a 16 inch piece of rope. All of the other measurements according to Nuggets tutorial are um, the same. The only thing I changed was the overall length of the rope which then affects the the di the circumference of your uh, of your loop. So if you want a bigger loop, make them longer. If you want a smaller loop, make it um, s shorter rope. So you're gonna need a, a some sort of way of marking your rope. You're gonna need your lashet, zing it, whatever you got. You're gonna need some sort of thin wire to use as your fid. This is what you're gonna feed through the rope. Um, ideally, you'd want something a little bit smaller than this because this is actually gets hard to to um, push through this diameter rope, but the trade-off is you, you lose some stiffness in your wire the thinner you get. So uh, the green floral wire seems to work well. I just can't seem to find my little piece of that that I had. So we'll use this. I may fight with the, the rope a little more. Um, and then of course you need some way to cut your rope if you have it on the roll. 
And really, that's it. We're not normally when you splice, you uh, you split these out and camera's having a hard time here. Um, you split these ends off here and uh, thin them out so that they're. I'm, I'm forgetting the word here. So that this is narrower, and that helps, I guess, with the gripping of it when you're in more weight bearing situations. But you, and it also helps when you're when you're feeding the rope through itself. You don't need need to do it for this, um, so I'm not going to. Uh, I think it may actually make it harder to to do one of the steps later on, because uh, you're dealing with such f small amounts here. So I'm going to attempt to try to show this to you. I'm looking at the camera as I do this, so this is going to be a little tricky. But so let's let's get started. The first thing you need to do is mark off two and a half inches. Now this ruler doesn't start at right at, at the end of the ruler. You gotta kinda go up a little bit. So you wanna get to two and a half inches. You know, this doesn't have to be precise, but I've yet to make two that are the exact same length, so I suppose if you're really precise about stuff, you could get them exactly the same length. So I marked that off at two and a half inches. Now, you're going to want to, best you can, push this rope together. And I've, after making a couple of these today, I found that kind of going all around your mark. I don't know if you can see my mark on there. There it is. Just trying to open up a space right where your mark is, in the center of this rope. So that you can then take your, your wire it helps if you have good eyesight for this. You want to try to get it in the center if you can. Hold the rope. It's easier to do if you can look right at the camera, but look right at the rope instead of the camera. Okay, there we go. Alright, so I got it through there. So now basically all you're going to do is you're going to open up the end of your metal here, your Royer. You're going to put this right at the end, squeeze that back down. Then you're going to pull this right through. right through your rope like that. You can take that off. Now you're gonna want another little piece of rope to put in there. I'm gonna use some yellow just to differentiate it. And you're gonna cinch that down. Okay. Now you're gonna measure an inch and a half down where those basically come out together there. And this is tricky because it falls out on you, but. Basically you wanna measure from right where they come together, down an inch and a half. that. Again, it doesn't have to be precise. This is going to be the length of the sh shackle part. The part that, where that opens and closes. That's going to give you the slack for that. So now we get into the trickier part of this whole thing. Gonna pull your, this is where we're going to make a locked Brummel after we get this through here. So you just basically line up your rope. 
think I want to come from the opposite side. See how my rope is going on top of itself? We're going to come up from the opposite side. Again, staying in the middle if you can. Try not to split any of the hairs, the fibers. All right, so we came out through the opposite side. Open up your fit again. Slip that end in there. Pull it through. Okay. So now, with your rope position, like I got this here, so you're going to want to have your short tail pointing towards you. Make sure this is tight. Okay. Short tail. You're gonna to want to go with your fid right up, right up close to tight here. All right. So you can kind of visually keep an eye on where that is, and then slide this back a little bit. Make sure you keep an eye on where that is. You're going to go down through this way. You're going to go down into it. And now you're going to grab the long end of your rope with your fit. And this is the lock bromel. This is the most complicated part of the whole thing, really. There's an extra fuzz on that rope there. Okay. If you don't do this, the whole thing will slip out on you. So. Again, we're gonna, so you can see all this. Sorry, there, all right, so I pulled it through. And now you're gonna pull this whole bigger piece through. Okay. And when you tighten it all down, it'll move up on there, okay? So that's locked in there, it's not going anywhere. So now what we have to do, let me move this over there because I'm getting a little bit of glare. Now we, what we're going to do is we're going to bury, just for neatness sake, we're going to bury this little tail inside the rope here. Now normally when you bury something like this, you want to go at least a quarter of an inch longer than the part you're burying so that you can get your fit out and you get make sure that all the rope inside is, is buried. So with this, now this gets tricky. You're going to want to go just, you're not going through the rope, you're just going inside of it. And you get better at this as you go. The more times you do this. So you're going to feed that down inside the rope. It's going to not coming out the other side. It's all inside the rope. And you're going to go down. Hopefully you can see this. You're going to want to try to come out as close as you can to where those two ropes are coming together. That tail's coming out. Okay. So this is this. This is where if you, if you had tapered, that's where I was looking for earlier. If you had tapered your end, I think this might be a little harder, maybe not. But you're gonna wanna grab that little tail again. And now you're gonna pull it down inside the rope. And let's take some maneuvering. Let's see it's starting to disappear. If I just squeeze this and work in it, and eventually what's going to happen is you're going to pop out this other end. So that's my tail right there. So now you want to do what they call milking it. You want to milk the berry. You're going to basically take this bunched up stuff here and you're going to pull it down like that. So now we've made the adjustable part. And that's really the 
the hardest part of the whole thing. Okay, so there's your adjustable part. And you can now adjust that open. Like that. So, now we're gonna skip on down to the other end. And you want an inch and a half here. Kind of fold it, doesn't matter which way. You're going to want to fold it at the mark. Okay. Fold it right about roughly at my the black mark there. Okay. So then again, so what we're going to do is we're going to bury this tail inside the rope. So go in you know, about a quarter of an inch or a little more. I don't know how much you want to fight with it. Past where that tail folds over. Okay. Again, we're gonna we're gonna snake down inside the rope a little bit further this time. So we're gonna try. You're gonna get inside. Kind of helps to. Oops, once you're in there, kind of bunch this up as you go, and then work it. You may slip out the back side, just back up your fid. See, I popped out the back side, so you just want to go back in. So basically you're going to come up to where your fold is, or your black mark. The straighter you can keep your fit, the better off you are. Alright, so again, you come out at your mark, come out at your mark. And here you're going to grab your tail again. The more of these you do, the faster this goes. And if you're just doing it without looking at it through a camera, it goes a little bit quicker. So again, you put, you're gonna want to get as little of that as you can up there, but you want enough so that you don't lose it inside the rope. So now we're going to pull this, just like we did before, we're going to pull this down. down inside so what's gonna happen is that it's gonna close up on the end there as we go so just kind of twisting where all right so we're moving now so you're basically gonna pull on this until you get your fit and your tail out the other end but you want to keep an eye on this end just as that loop disappears in the end you're gonna to want to stop it so you don't pull too far At this point, if you lost your rope, you could pull on that end and get it out. So there, we're almost completely gone. So my inch, oh, there it is. All right, so now, again, we're going to milk that berry. Basically, hold on to your end. And just, if I did it right, the tail will be completely gone inside of there. Okay. 
So now you'll notice that end's just a wee bit thicker than the rest of the rope. And this is the end you're gonna tie your overhand knot in, right at that end, okay? The basic knot that everybody makes. Probably their first knot ever. It's tricky, because you're dealing with a little, you wanna to try to keep it on that thick part of the rope. Lost it. You could make that a little bit longer if you wanted to have more room to work here. Tighten that down. So there you go. There's your overhand knot. And then you can take your other end and just pull on it. Tighten up. You gotta get a little. You gotta be careful not to lose your. Yeah, this is not something you're gonna want to do in the winter time because it's hard to get these open in the winter time. So we put it in there. and there's a simplified soft shackle so I hope that helps people um, thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon